Okay, let's make something cool. We start with a blank document, then we add a few default styling to it. Okay, let's also style the root element because it's the root element and we have to style it. Now as you may have noticed, there's a large padding at the bottom. This is because I want a large padding at the bottom of the page. You may have also noticed that the width is set to 200%, that's because I want the width to be two times bigger than the normal document. We have this cool page right here. We now have to add elements to make it lively, or should I say, card element. Okay, now let's give this card element some styling. We'll just pop in some height, width, background color, a slight border radius, you know how it is. You must be wondering why and how this card element is missing its other half, and the answer is simple. Remember the width of the root element is set to 200%, so the card element is exactly in the middle. As you can see when I change the width to 100%. Okay, I'll just leave it at 200% and continue with the styling. I'm going to need some styles for the images in this effect, so I'll pop in some height and width, and most importantly, set the opacity to 0. Then when the card is hovered, the opacity is changed to 1. Okay, but something is not right. We need more cards on the page, so let's duplicate this card multiple times. Okay, just as expected, more cards on the page. Now we'll go ahead and style the even elements of the cards. This is still not enough. Let's duplicate the cards one more time. Okay, now we're talking. We now have a page full of cards. But this method is inefficient. So instead of adding the elements in the HTML, we'll use JavaScript. Okay, in the JavaScript, we'll go ahead and select the root element. Then we'll set a loop for 50 iterations. Okay. Then we'll initialize a card variable and assign to it the HTML card element. Okay, finally, we'll append this variable containing the card element to the root element of the document. Okay, now we can't see the cards. Let's fix it by giving each card a random background color. Okay, let's add the style attribute, then use the HSL background property, which takes a hue value between 0 and 360, a saturation of 100%, and a lightness of 50%. We'll then use the random function to generate a number between 0 and 360. Okay, now the cards are visible with different colors as you can see. Let's now move to the interesting part. We'll add an event listener to the window to track the X and Y positions of the cursor and store them in the mouse X and mouse Y variables. Now if we divide the X and Y positions by the window width and height, we'll get the decimal X and Y positions of the cursor. If we don't want to pan too far away from our page, then we'll have to subtract the width of the window from the width of our page, thus allowing us to pan in the range of the page. Now to pan around the page, we can multiply the deck x and y variables by the max x and y variables to get the amount to move in the direction of the cursor. Finally, we'll now animate the page to translate in the direction of pan x and y variables. Seems like we're moving in the wrong direction, so let's multiply the pan x and y variables by minus 1. Okay, we now have our cool effect, but there's one last thing missing. The images. Let's put our image in the card element, then we'll use the unsplash as source. We'll then set the sig of the unsplash API to the variable i of the loop to get random images for each card. That's it. After going through all this trouble, you've made yourself this cool effect that can be added to your portfolio.
talking about portfolios. In the next video, we're going to be building another portfolio. Just as always, it won't be something you've seen before. So hang around, like this video, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.